the first lady of the Republic of Kenya to make her remarks. Thank you. We may be seated. President of the Assembly, Honorable Roman Mayor Falcon, Ms. Maimuna Sharif, Under Secretary General and Executive Director, United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, members of the Diplomatic Corps, our Cabinet Secretary for Lands, Mwishmiwa Njeru, representatives from national and local governments of Kenya, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the inaugural First Lady Roundtable at the second UN Habitat Assembly. And for the visitors, I believe you are enjoying our Kenyan hospitality. Receive warm greetings from His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruta, who was here yesterday. Thank you, Executive Director, Maimuna, and the entire United Nations Fraternity for your warm welcome to the United Nations office in Nairobi. I am honored to host the inaugural First Lady Roundtable, a forum to share, discuss, and agree on various approaches that will raise the profile of sustainable urban development through the voice and agency of women. The theme of today's roundtable is women shaping cities and communities, a topic that recognizes the role of women as enablers of our cities and communities to thrive as a whole. The story of Beatrice and Rose are an example of what resilience and belief in moving forward despite whatever circumstances you are in is important, and the fact that no one else can do it for you but yourself. Think of how the story of Beatrice would be if the city had her in mind. We would have wider streets because she's thinking of what, is, what it takes to hold at a minimum two children on each side of her as they walk home from school. The city would have paved roads that she and her family can walk on or riding with the kids, especially on weekends as they unwind as family. Beatrice is a teacher in one of the informal settlements in Nairobi, and the children in her class have no playground. How about a walk in the park, and for the learners to play at the swings and run around in green open spaces. That kind of space and activities reminds me of my growing up days. Growing up in Kakamega County, we shared the one broken bike with my siblings on the rural roads. We would have, ta we would have the time of our lives as we went rolling at high speed down the valley, many times with no brakes. The feeling of joy and freedom was priceless. Ladies and gentlemen, such cities are possible if we commit to be inclusive and sustainable. Vienna City is an example we can learn from as we think of how our cities and communities can be more sustainable, especially with women in mind. Vienna's government has made the city safer and a more convenient place for women after incorporating a gender lens into urban design. Improvement of public facilities, including improvements, improving street lighting, made parks more accessible to young girls, widened pavements and designed neighborhoods helped meet the social needs of women. Kenya has made its positive strides through street lighting in conjunction with the Kenya Power and Lighting Company, modernized markets with some, with some having daycare facilities, remodeled public parks, and walking and cycling lanes in some of our major towns. The, the woman is the mirror of the society. If she is marginalized, the community is oppressed. If strengthened, the community 
is empowered. Women must be at the table when planning for our cities and communities. A woman, is a, a woman in the society atom, indeed, without her, nothing would exist. I believe that if women are given the right opportunities and tools, they have the power to uplift themselves and their communities. This is the reason why I advocate for and insist that women must be at the center of shaping cities and communities. Ladies and gentlemen, SDG 11 focuses on making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. More than 50% of the world's population live in cities, and by 2050, an estimated 7 out of 10 people will likely live in urban areas. In developing countries, this increase continues to be driven by rural urban migration in search of employment and business opportunities. Cities are key drivers of economic growth globally and contribute more than 80% of global GDP. A growing younger generation is another key driver for urban population growth. This urban population explosion has resulted in several challenges such as insufficient housing, the growth of informal settlements, inadequate solid waste management, to name but a few. Green spaces and tree cover are greatly affected in an effort to make room for human settlements. There is an increase in air and noise pollution and carbon emission from motor vehicles. Ladies and gentlemen, the local scenario is not different from the global experience. Urbanization is changing how Kenyans live. It is estimated that by 2030, 34% of Kenyans will be living in urban areas. Kenya has a deficit of 200,000 houses annually, and the government is encouraging investments in affordable housing. Affordable housing is a key part of the government's bottom-up economic plan with a goal to restore the dignity of informal settlement dwellers. It's every woman's goal to own a house and have the security that her family has an assurance of a decent roof over their head. The Kenyan government has a plan to grow the number of affordable mortgages from the current 30,000 to 1 million by 2032. Devolution, for instance, in Kenya has seen urban migration diluted from the capital city to county headquarters by creating opportunities for employment and investment. Government investment in affordable and sustainable transport systems, the upgrade of transport infrastructure are key for better management of urban areas. Mama Doing Good has launched several programs to positively shape our cities and communities. I shall delve deeper into the thematic areas during the roundtable discussion. I'm, con confident that the, I'm confident that the outcomes from today's dialogue shall go a long way in supporting and attaining SDG 11, which is about sustainable cities and communities, and through SDG 5, which is e equality. We shall amplify the voice of our women through involving them in the pursuit of inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable communities. With those few remarks, I wish to officially launch the First Lady Roundtable and look forward to our engagement towards enhancing sustainability of our cities and communities. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and may God bless you. One more round of applause for Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Mama Rachel Ruto. And as she said in her speech, we are amplifying.